Good evening. Welcome to the August 17th meeting of the Town of Brighton Planning Board. Uh, tonight's meeting, as you obviously can see, is being held virtually uh, via Zoom, and this is in accordance with the continuation of the governor's executive order uh, regarding public meeting laws. Uh, we do check these and the governor's directives uh, and executive orders, uh, and we'll get back to live in-person meetings uh, as those directives change. Uh, as with all of our meetings, uh, everybody is welcome to submit comments uh, on our applications. Either tonight you'll be able to, uh, to join us and uh, make comments on any application of interest to you, uh, or you're welcome to submit comments uh, after hearing the presentation or viewing any of the materials that you see tonight. Uh, you can make those comments to Jeff Frisch. Jeff is our, the secretary of the, uh, of the planning board. And his email is jeff.frisch at townofbrighton.org. Uh, Jeff, at this point, could I ask you to uh, call the roll, please? Altman? Here. Price? Got it. Here. Bader? Babcock Steiner? Here. Osowski? Here. Ford. Did, uh, David Fader, did you respond? Yes. Yep. Thank I'm you. here. Thank you. We see you. Yes. Very nice. Okay. Uh, at this point, the board, we're going to uh, hold an agenda review with, uh, with our staff um, before we get into the, tonight's public hearings. Uh, Jeff, what have we got tonight? It looks like the agenda is uh, somewhat reduced due to uh, some applications being withdrawn or postponed. Yeah, um, I'll go over them. And 5 po 22 the application of Telmutical Institute mm -hmm. um, for the conditional use permit, that one has been postponed until September. The public hearing remains open. 6PO322, the application of Birnbaum companies for a preliminary final site plan approval and conditional use permit. Um, they have not submitted any additional information for this one and did not submit anything postponing the application. So we might deny that one without prejudice. Okay. Uh, so 7PO422 for 1220 Brighton Henrietta Talmine Road for Herc Rentals. That one was withdrawn by the applicant. 8 PO 122, the application of Wendy Frieda and Bruce Dan for site plan modification um, from the original approval 2 PO 222. They will be on for tonight. Um, that one's for their, they revised their site plan. They added a, a lot of pavement in the backyard, which made them, um, was kind of brought them in and there's also some drainage issues on site that we we needed them to to review and and alter and fix. Um, they submitted the application, as you probably saw in the, the staff report. There's there's some issues with it for the calculations of the paved coverage in the back. Um, the engineer had some additional comments. The town engineer has some additional comments regarding um, some recommendations for the water flow as it comes towards, goes towards the road, um, instead of channelizing it, maybe to open it up for more sheet flow. Um, we feel, the staff felt like that's something that we can handle afterwards, um, if, you, if the board decides to approve the project. Okay. Um, and we're also, um, we should make sure too that it's not going to be flowing onto the neighbor's property. So we can ask them some questions on that. Any questions for that one? No, I was just curious what happened there and why why this was back. They they added there was a patch in the backyard that was supposed to be lawn and they replaced it with turf. 
and there's there's some drainage issues on site and with the addition of the turf they needed drainage under the turf to come out and be daylighted someplace on the on the property along with some other drainage around that that was originally looking like it was flowing onto some of the neighbors by turf are you do you mean synthetic turf yeah it's astroturf yeah. Yeah. or synthetic turf yeah. yeah okay thank you all right no questions APO 22, application of paychecks of New York LLC owner in Golisano Business Inc. is agent for a conditional use permit approval to allow for a college to be located at 150 Sawgrass Drive. Um, this one, when we were reviewing it, we have some, this one we're reviewing today and found out that at the time um, earlier, they hadn't submitted the Monroe County to the Monroe County Development review um mm -hmm. i believe i checked before and it's like they have now but we still need to see the revolt results of that before we can give them approval so we be tabling this application we also have some questions about the one of the questions for a conditional use permit it is to code section 217.7D, which is for the conditional use permit is about the requirements for economic welfare of the community. Um, I think Ken will have some, some stuff to say about that later on during the presentation, but um, we'll need to table it for the Monroe County Review Forum and then um, seek some more information on the economic welfare portion of the conditional use permit. Um, after that, uh, AP, 10 p mb one do you guys have any question about the Paychex Galasano project? Minor questions, but uh, be interested in the, in the presentation. All right. Um, so on to the new business section, 10P MB121 application for the quickly that 1950-1966 Monroe Ave. That was postponed by the applicant to the September meeting. 5P MB122 application of Telmutic Institute of Upstate New York for select plan modifications, EPOD, preliminary and conditional use permit. Uh, that one well, that one was tabled or postponed by the applicant to the September meeting as well. 5P MB222, the for the quickleys at 3108 East Ave was also postponed by the applicant to the September meeting. I know that they're trying to get their zoning board approval mm -hmm. prior to coming back to the planning board and they were not able to present last month to the zoning board. Yeah, uh, Jeff, can you just quickly go back to uh, Monroe Avenue quickly's? Yes. Uh, where where does do you have it? Where does that stand with the uh, with regard to the incentive zoning application? I believe they're still working with the town board on that. Okay, is the town board waiting on anything from this board in the way of? recommendations or comments from us I don't there, think uh, hey jeff if i could just jump in here yeah, um so right now um the town board did receive the planning board's comments with respect to the incentive zoning application so that feedback has been received the town okay. board is now waiting for the applicant to provide revised drawings and information um, there is some question as to questions about design um, um, in terms of the facade and um, some of the other features of the property that are being worked on by the uh, applicant. Uh, that has not yet been submitted to the town. Once that is submitted, then uh, there will be a uh, another public hearing before the town board on the incentive zoning application itself. 
if the town board passes on the application, then that whole project comes back to the planning board for a site plan review. Very good. Okay, just curious. Thanks, Ken. And I okay, and you did say that the other uh, Quickly's is waiting on uh, ZBA approval. Yes, correct. All right, thank you. All right, um, that's the agenda. Any board members have questions, comments? Yeah, th th this is John. I have one question or comment. Th there was a letter from Howard Kravitz where he criticized us for being uh, unfriendly toward business in Brighton regarding that Herc Rentals project last month. And I mean, I, I reviewed the, the minutes from our discussions there several times over and i i didn't pick up that vibe at all i mean i don't may, maybe they expected us to approve it right away that night i guess may, may might have been their expectations but you know we in you know town engineering felt that the the site plans weren't quite ready enough for that so i don't know i i was i was really a little little taken aback by by that comment and, yeah, John, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I also uh, saw that letter and I went back and I actually watched the video recording uh, of the section of the meeting um, just to see what exactly it is Mr. Kravitz thought he was talking about. And there's nothing there. Um, and as you, you may recall, actually, they did not submit a full site plan. They submitted right. a little corner right. of the lot. And yeah. I think yeah. Jeff asked them, rightly so, can you submit a site plan? And his response was, well, I just have, you know, the maps or information I got from the broker and the owner. And so um, I don't know what happened there. Um, I don't know why they withdrew that application. Um, the applicants seemed very receptive to everything that we yeah. were asking for and uh, answered all the questions fine. Um, maybe it came down to a disagreement as to who was going to pay for the site plan to be prepared. And um they walked away. I, I don't know. that That's the only thing I can imagine, John. But certainly there was nothing unfriendly there. It was actually a very friendly meeting, I thought. I thought. All right. Thank you, Ken. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, yeah. Thank you for bringing that to the attention. I, I, I didn't see that letter. <laughs> but thank you for bringing it up. Uh, I recall that being a fairly decent conversation. And one applicant recognized what needed to be provided for us to make a decision. So I uh, hope oh, Mr. Kravitz has a chance to uh, review the meeting minutes. Okay, uh, anything else? Thank you, John. Welcome. All right, let me go back to the top of our agenda. At this point, uh, we do have three months worth of uh, meeting minutes to review. I will say that um, we did get the May meeting minutes uh, today. I personally had time to review those, but I don't know if everybody else did and would feel comfortable, anyone would feel comfortable making a motion on May 18th meeting minutes. If, if we're not, we can postpone those to uh, September and, uh, and go on to June and uh, July, why don't we take uh, June 15th meeting minutes. Uh, does anyone uh, have a motion to approve the minutes? Yeah, this is John. I'll, I'll move that we approve the minutes from the June 15th meeting. I'll second. Uh, moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? No. Uh, Jeff, please call the roll. Altman. What's present, right? No, I. <laughs> June meeting minutes. I'm not present. Oh, oh not you present. are not present. I yeah. see. There, yeah. All right. Price. Aye. Trader. Aye. Backpack Steiner. Aye. Masowski. Aye. June is approved. All right, thank you. Uh, we also have June 20th 
meeting minutes? Uh, oh, July, July 20th. I, I apologize, I apologize. July meeting minutes. Was anyone interested in making a motion to approve those minutes? I will move to approve the meeting minutes from our July 20th meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. <laughs> Moved and seconded. Uh, anybody that was not there? I wasn't there. Okay. All right. Uh, moved and seconded. Noted that David Fader was not present. Jeff, will you please call the roll? Yep. Altman? Aye. Price? Aye. Babcock Steiner? Aye. Masowski? Aye. Approved. Okay, so we will hold over the May meeting minutes for review uh, in September. Uh, that will bring us to the portion of hearing tonight's uh, public hearings and the applications. Uh, Jeff, could you please confirm that tonight's meeting and the uh, applications were properly advertised? Yes, the public hearing was advertised for the planning board and the daily record of August 11th, 2022. Okay, thank you. Uh, please recall, uh, if you did not hear, uh, when we had our meeting, uh, or just our staff and member meeting, the several applications have been uh, withdrawn or postponed. The first is the uh, 5PO222. This is the application of Talmudic Institute of Upstate and Montessori School. Um, that has been postponed to our September meeting. The application of uh, 6PO322, the application of Birnbaum Company's owner. Uh, this is an application that uh, we have not received any additional information on, and we have not heard from the applicant that they are postponing uh, at this point, uh, we will probably take this matter up at the end during deliberations and uh, consider denying without prejudice. Um, uh, Bill, if I may, um, are you calling that matter? Are you calling that matter, that Birnbaum matter? Is that? I was going to do that at, ultimately at the end, but I'm saying we're we're just not going to hear the application. They don't have any additional. Well, I'm just, I, I just don't know if, if, did we close the public hearing on that previously? You did not. Okay. We did. So what I don't know is if anybody in our uh, Zoom audience here wants to speak on that application. Uh, good point. Why don't we? Why don't we then uh, open that up and make that? We'll we'll open up the application then. Uh, so we'll let's uh, open application six PO three twenty two. This is the application of uh, Birnbaum Company's owner for preliminary. And final site plan approval for and a conditional use permit approval for construction of a 3,050 square foot addition uh, to their warehouse property located at 150 Metro Park. Is there anybody here representing the applicant? Please kindly raise your hand. Looks like there is not. Okay. All right, seeing that this is a public hearing, is there anyone in the audience interested in addressing this application? I don't see anyone. Um, and Bill, if we could just have Jeff verify, uh, Jeff, if you could, that nothing further has been submitted to the town relative to this application since it was last heard by this board, correct? Yeah, correct. Nothing else has been submitted. We received okay. a postponement letter once, but we haven't had any, gotten any additional material. All right, very good. All right, thank you. All right, um, with no making comments, we would move on to the application 7PO422. This is the application of Mount Reed Emerson Street property. That application has been withdrawn uh, by the applicant. Can I? Yeah. Um, there's somebody in the chat asking if we're going to accept public comment for any of the tabled matters. 
are we only going to do that through writing and, and not through an open yeah, we're not opening the hearing at this point since they've been tabled that will be continued till the uh, meeting. to the september meeting. Yeah. Yeah. to the september yeah. meeting uh if they're interested in comments please send them to you jeff okay i suspect i hope whoever wanted to comment uh heard me thank you very much though for participating all right so now we move to uh 8 p.m 122 this is wendy frida and bruce dan uh, for a site plan modification regarding grading and drainage uh, control at their property located at 575 Winton Road. Um, I think I saw the owners um, who would like to uh, represent them. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is John Sharaba from Land Tech representing Wendy and Dan this evening. Welcome, welcome, John. Yep. Um, let me just give you a quick overview of what this project consists of. The board may remember back in March of 2021, we approved uh, a site plan for a resubdivision and uh, site plan approval for the construction of this new home where there once was two houses on these lots. Now there is only one. I think it's important to point out that the proposed house uh, as constructed recently meets all zoning requirements as far as setback, uh, elevation of the house, I think the builder did an excellent job placing it and everything worked out very, very well. Um, upon getting near completion of the home, landscapers came in and started doing landscaping associated with uh, the final elements of the house exterior. And at that time, um, Wendy and Dan, uh, when, excuse me, Wendy and Bruce wanted uh, some air artificial turf in the rear of their home. So basically behind their bedroom on the north west side of the house, they installed approximately 1,500 square foot of artificial turf. Um, and also in conjunction with that, if you look at the pictures, there's the um, vinyl fence that was installed along the perimeter. And then there's some large stone, landscaping stone that made kind of a retaining wall um, that also uh, went around the perimeter of the yard. Um, this caused about a one foot change in elevation. Um, so, so essentially it stopped the original flow of the drainage coming from the Western properties um, and then through our side yard to Winton Road. That's the way the natural drainage patterns run. And that's the way we designed it previously. So there was kind of a grass swale between the new house and our North property line. Well, that changed with this uh, increase in elevation associated with the AstroTurf. That's also the town's policy that AstroTurf installed in this manner is considered impervious. So we had to look at that. So as Jeff said, we had to do some additional calculations for the town engineer. Uh, we reviewed, we did an extensive topographic survey of the as-built situation, extending it well into the neighboring yards, both to the west and to the north. Um, we actually did one-tenth contour so we can really analyze what's going on over there. Um, so basically our proposal was to install a eight inch um, drainage pipe just uh, um, north of the ash of the astro or excuse me of the of the artificial turf which would transfer the stormwater from our northwest corner um, underground to our east um, right on the north side of the house and where it was originally intended uh, also there was a, a berm installed along our north property line uh, with some trees on it that would uh, prevent water from migrating to the north, uh, to the northern neighbor. We, we intend to also increase that, make the berm a little more significant and extend the berm further to the east towards Winton Road. That would, that would keep all the water on our property and not negatively impact the neighbor to the north. The neighbor to the north is very important to me. I met with Mr. Feldman uh, two or three times to uh, uh, listen to his concerns regarding the drainage and that he does not want to be negatively impacted. And Wendy and Bruce do not want to negatively impact him. I believe that these measures that we put in place uh, and I reviewed the plan with Mr. Feldman in quite detail uh, will work uh, to the benefit of him. Um, and we'll go right back to the original drainage patterns of the site plans. So basically the installation of the AstroTurf and the rock walls um, caused this uh, issue. Um, 
We do not need any additional variances or anything associated with that uh, for the hardscape that was installed. And I think with this small modification and installation, uh, we should solve any negative problems created by this situation. So hopefully that's an overview and I can answer any questions you have. Thank you. Um, I guess for for Jeff, um, you know what what were the what are the initial well, what are the concerns of uh, the town engineer with with regard to this and have they reviewed this particular solution? Uh, the, some of the particular concerns, I mean, there's were that the there's some calculations in the yeah, bottom so. left that were not um, they weren't right. They're not they're not showing the existing conditions um, right now. They kind of said it was going to, they're removing 900 square feet and it would be down to 500 square feet, but there's uh, almost 1400 square feet existing for the turf area, which from my calculations did put them over the rear yard coverage. Um, but upon, based on their calculations, but from what I looked at on the site and from ever we think they're pretty close to what they, what they're allowed as a 35% rear paved coverage. Um, they just need to make some modifications. Um, and so the, the site plan is existing isn't really, um, there, it doesn't relate to the calculations that they have. And I think that that's a, something that we can fix and they can submit to us for our view. Um, some of the concerns too from the engineer were access to the neighboring property because there seems to be a drain on the property to the west and um, the, the outflow of the pipe going from the turf area and kind of maybe expanding those contours so there's more of a more of a gentle mm -hmm. um, overland flow instead of a let's it's tight it a channel yeah. Yeah, yeah what just I'm curious I'm just curious about this um, is is the coverage issue it's created by the by the surface material the actual astroturf material itself it's not the fact that the grade was raised a foot from the original uh, well the, the the raising grade ended up putting the made the flow any storm flow from the site go on to the neighbor's property mm -hmm. like the neighbors to the west and the neighbors to the north and so that was the issue that came when they installed the turf because it's higher than grade and it caused the flow to go off the, the property um, where it hadn't before, which is, we don't allow. Yeah, okay. Mr. Chairman, can I speak to those two issues quickly? Kindly, yes, please. So the the, the issue of lock coverage, if, if Jeff can zoom down to the bottom left corner of that map you currently have, there are some, uh, the, the notes on the, um, the other way, Jeff. Uh, the bottom notes after the table there, those were erroneously left on. Uh, this plan was a living document. We are working through um, some calculations through with, with town staff. So the sentences related to removal of the turf and stuff were erroneous. But if you look at the calculations, which do include the, the 1,400, almost 1,500 square foot of turf to remain, um, I think uh, any variances at all. Um, and then Jeff mentioned about a structure proposed on someone else's property. We don't, we're not proposing anything on anyone else's property. Um, it's all contained on ours and we'll make sure that that is the case. But it showed some drain pipes on the right over the west boundary it, line. And it's not over the property line at all. There's, it's on the other side of the fence, but the fence is kind of champered in that corner up at the northwest corner. Okay. It looks like it's on another parcel. Yeah. And there, there's some issues that we'll work out with Everett. I mean, we did meet with Everett on site. We understand. I mean, I think we're really, the, the concerns we have, and I think the town has, is making sure that the neighbors are not negatively impacted. And um, I believe I actually called Mr. Feldman today to make sure he was on tonight. If he had any concerns, make sure the board could hear it. I don't know if he's on, um, but we're going to work to that end to make sure that he's not negatively impacted. Okay. Brennan, can you zoom into okay. the upper right? <laughs> the there? Other corner. Yeah. yeah. So, so you can keep zooming in, yeah. Right there, where that yeah. round it says eight. Okay, so right so there is 
are those arrows up above are they land flow and not chant like the arrows are de demonstrating where the, the it says eight inch eight by eight four inch y and then it's an eight inch end section up above on the neighboring property is that oh, just those are those are existing drainage patterns okay so that's the drainage pattern okay yeah. got it and uh, if you look, the red line obviously is our property line. We're not proposing anything mm -hmm. um, there. I mean, just while we have that image up along our west property line, you see there's 60 linear foot of four inch perforated under drain. That's going to go between the existing rocks and the fence that's there. That'll have to go in by hand. We're not going to propose equipment. It's only going to be a four inch pipe. And that's to catch any drainage that would come from the west and bring it to our pipe. And then the fact that that fence had that chamfered corner worked out really well because we could put that end section of that pipe there <coughs> in the west corner of our property, which is kind of like a little low spot. Even Mr. Feldman's property, I think, drains that way in some regard um, and capture any water there and then bring it through our site. <clears throat> okay. um, it's also important to note that the the artificial turf as described as impervious we do capture all of that surface into our yard drain system where you can see where it says yard drain that goes into the originally designed stormwater system that goes in front of the house so that artificial turf is not contributing at all to any of the water we're basically handling the water that comes to our site from adjacent properties with this change okay is there any concern about ice coming from there onto the driveway or down into the to Winton in the winter? Yeah, um, I guess it could be a problem. Um, we do have the, the, we want the water to drain between our property line uh, and the proposed berm and the hammerhead turnaround for the driveway. So, you know, I guess it's a concern, but it was probably a, uh, a small concern during the original approval as well. Okay. Um. Okay, I, I'm I keep moving my hands on my mouse here, but I'm I'm not controlling this. Could Brendan, could you scroll down now to the point where we can see Winton and this uh, channel? So, Mr. Chairman, this channel looks scarier than it is. That's it's okay. Gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be very not perceived at all. You yeah, know, okay. uh, with yeah. all those additional one tenth contours, it looks pretty significant, but um, we just wanted to show as much detail as possible. That's going to be a very mobile, unperceived uh, scale. Yeah, I will tell you, John, and, and both the owners, I'm equally scared of berms. Um, really don't want to see berms extending into the front of the yard. Um, is there... Um, they're they're not a natural landform. I know what they're there to do, but I I really don't want to see them ahead of the the front of the house. Um, and I just John, do you do you think that this uh, you know this is really going to come down to Everett and you guys figuring this out? But uh, I, I don't want any real precedent of putting berms ahead of a house. So we, we hesitated calling it a berm. So if you look at the okay. that image you have right now, the there is a berm uh, with the with the three pine trees on it right now. And if you look at what yeah. we're proposing, we're proposing a six to twelve inch high berm, not a three foot berm. We really want to protect Mr. Feldman. And I yeah. really, if, if the if you look at the grades, there's a huge uh, silver maple that's right out of yeah. front of our property. Yeah, it, it kind of rises up at the trunk. And I really yeah. just wanted to bring some grade and it, 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 again, it'll be very, it's not going to be perceived as a berm. I just don't want any okay. water going to Mr. Feldman. And I okay. want to create a, a low spot between that white, that silver bird or that silver maple and our hammerhead. In the, in okay. The place, which really intended on this approved site plan. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Understood. All right. Thank you. Um, other board members have questions for John or the applicant? Yeah, th this is John. I have, I have a question. Um, is, is there an irrigation system for the natural turf? Because I, I know this on the, the south lawn, 
is really nice. Um, they, they bought natural turf and, and rolled it out into the yard. So it looks beautiful. Um, but the, the lawn restoration work around the driveway uh, still needs a, needs a lot of work. Uh, was there a, <laughs> yeah. was there a well, I, uh, I, I guess I got two questions. One, you know, one, is there an irrigation system for the lawn over the entire yard, the natural lawn areas? Yeah, and then yes. two, the, the answer is yes. We put an irrigation okay. system in everywhere. And yes, the front of the house was just grass because that's what we were going to do everywhere just for, you know, no cost reasons. Um, and we saw how poorly it was coming in. So that south side, we made the decision at the last second to roll out that side and it was a good decision. But we do have irrigation everywhere, front and back. All right, so, so, you, so you did not- the north side, that, that's still kind of an active construction site based on this on your board's review. So we've kind of right. left that in limbo. All right. But the because, plan I mean, is to put irrigation back there, yes. All right. Bruce, please, please just quickly give us your name and address. Thing for the me, my name is uh yeah. Bruce Dan, Bruce Dan, and 575 Winton Road South, Rochester, New York, 14618. That's the house here. Thank you very much. It's a uh <clears throat> recording formality that we need. So thank you. All right, John Osowski, thank you. Uh, right. you good? Anybody else? Uh, other questions? Jason, you're good. I'm good. Okay, Karen, are you good? I'm, I'm all set. Thank you. And David? Uh, yeah, I'm okay. All right. Okay. Uh, John, thank you. Um, and Bruce, uh, this is a public hearing. Is there anybody that wishes to address this application? There was one person raising their hand early. Uh, can you let them in, please? Yep, yeah, Snyderman. Hi there. Um, hi there. We're we're neighbors to the uh, to the west, and uh, this is admittedly our first public hearing. So we're we would really like to understand what the ram ramifications are for the neighbors. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, the the ramifications. Or you and you're you're to the west. Uh, you're you're uh, from what we have reviewed in this project. Uh, you're you're actually draining onto this applicate uh, this applicant property. Uh, so what they're in the process of doing is they're trying to solve the problem of drainage that comes from properties to the west that pass through the site uh, and trying to do it in a manner that it doesn't affect the neighbor that's to the north of them. Uh, so all of this is, uh, it's, it's kind of a combination of the, the new drainage that's being created by the improvements that uh, uh, Mrs. Frieda and Mr. Dan are, uh, have proposed. Uh, plus they have to take into account drainage that pre-existed this application. So they're trying to make sure that the common of runoff is not affecting most of the uh, impact is going to be, you know, it's trying to be avoided as to the neighbor to the north of the applicant. Uh, your property is draining onto their property. So that's what we're, that's what we're trying to uh, address. And thank you for joining, by the way. Glad you're. Thank you. And I, I, I appreciate the the response, but you know, not once have we ever heard that we are draining anything anywhere. So, like, I, I completely appreciate the the fact that this might help with with the situation. But where is this even coming from? Well, so where you where you live, um, yeah, this is probably something you would never, unless you were involved in this uh, routinely, like a lot of us on this. <laughs> In this business, um, you you wouldn't even really know that you know your yard, you know your roof, your driveway, your your lawn areas, all drain somewhere, and yours drains on to the to the east onto the applicant's property, and it's just it's been going on for a long time. It's just when a new application comes in, um, 
we have to make sure that, you know, drainage is, is one of the big issues that we have to make sure doesn't impact uh, negatively any of the surrounding properties. Well, so <laughs> roads and roads and Cobbs Hill and everything drained toward your toward you guys. So you get it from other places and likewise your property drains to adjacent properties. And it sounds like this is a much much bigger problem than and um, again, you know, if this is when we had this property assessed and and inspected, none of this came up in the inspection. So the natural question is how is this going to increase taxes in the in the in the future? Uh, that has absolutely no nothing to do with taxes. Well There's nothing, nothing to do until with it does. Oh, okay, well, okay, that's that's an irrelevant point, but. Uh, well, I, I think when taxes increase, it is relevant. Okay, it, taxes and drainage are, are not the same. Side. It has to do with property. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not here to, to start an argument. I really am trying to understand what this is going to do as I live directly to the west of, of, of this property and it impacts me. This, this, modification, this modification is just yeah. to, there's natural flow that goes over the land and this modification is being made so that the natural flow of water remains as it is. Mm -hmm. And that's all that we're, this is all what we're is, doing yeah. here. And this needs to go through a town approval? It needs to go through town approval because they're making, there was a new home that had a site plan approved by the planning board and now they're making changes to that site plan. And that's what makes it come back to the planning board for review. Okay. But, uh, thank you very much for, for joining the conversation. Okay, other, other questions or other comments from anybody else? I have an opportunity to speak. Yep, David Feldman is asking to speak. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my my concerns about this, and I had expressed my concerns, were were the hard surface and the um, the piped drainage on the backyard. I had actually spoken to the landscaper a number of times as this project was going on, and he finally told me that everything had been approved by the town and to bug off, which is when I approached the town. Um, I am very concerned about drainage from my neighboring property onto my property. And, and with the hard surface that's there, I'm concerned that when we have flood conditions due to heavy rains, the drainage stops working on Winton Road. And we have this eight inch drain that's in the middle of the AstroTurf that's going out to whatever the collector is and then onto Winton Road. And when the rain happens, Winton Road, the, the, uh, the water bubbles up from the storm collectors on Winton Road rather than draining. And, and while we put in this other drain pipe, I think that by, by getting rid of all the natural drainage that was there, it still is going to pose a problem for me under heavy rain conditions. And uh, we had a heavy rain, and I can't tell you what date it was, but my basement flooded worse than it had typically flooded. And I believe it's being adversely affected by my neighbor's landscaping. And, you know, I understand, you know, the, the, the Dan Freeds were out of town when this was going on, but, but I think that the bigger, the issues are bigger there. I think that the, um, that the impermeable surface that was put out there versus what was there with natural grass makes a big difference in terms of what's going to end up on my lot and when my basement is going to flood again. Okay. Uh, Mr. Feldman, have, have you had an opportunity to meet with our town engineer? about? Yes, that? I met with Everett and talked with Everett about that. And, and I talked with John about it. And, and you know, John has pre presented this to me. But again, my, I, I look at it and, and, and I look at the eight inch pipe that runs out of the, um, that, that runs out of the AstroTurf. And I know that in bad rain conditions, that pipe will be non-functional. 
And, and I think that the, the concept of draining you know, out to their berm, that's probably an, a more natural situation. But I think that once you get rid of all the permeable surfaces next door, uh, it's going to adversely per, uh, um, impact my, uh, my, my lot. And I have struggled for many years with flooded basements and we've put in drainage pipes and all that. And I watched what went on next door and I said, boy, this is just gonna be more problem to my house and the value of my house. And I'm not completely convinced that what's being done, what, I'm convinced that what was done was incorrect. And I'm not convinced that what's being proposed will be a, a final solution that will, that will correct uh, what's been done. Mr. Felton, this is Town Attorney Ken Gordon. Just to clarify the record, could you put your address on the record? Yes, David Feldman, 549 Winton Road, South Rochester, 14618. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, Mr. Feldman, are you, were you, have you other comments or? No, nope, I'm done. Okay. Thank you, uh, Jeff and uh, and John Shraba. Um, you know, in 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 thinking about uh, Mr. Feldman's comments, the the eight inch pipe, or the pipe that's uh, in the middle of the yard, runs around uh, well the middle of the back of the yard <clears throat> behind the house. That that line runs around ties into the storm system correct correct now if if there is an event where you know the the storm system does not have capacity during a certain event that would back up into the applicant's yard before going to any adjacent property yeah, in that along that property line is kind of a low point now, so it'll it'll stage right there. Um, well, we circle back around and be able to drain overland on the north side of the house, or would it not even get to that point? It uh, it could not get to that point due to the the rocks and the fill that have been placed, so it won't go there naturally. That's why it would, you know, during a large event uh, without this pipe being installed currently it would it would migrate further north to mr feldman's property that's why we wanted to put the pipe in and, and take it away from him so it wouldn't have a chance to go north so that that pipe you're proposing to put in uh and if i if i follow some of those drainage arrows that uh, show the existing condition drainage you're you're actually picking up drainage that is kind of naturally going toward his house. Correct. And intercepting that. And in theory, you know, I, I know this is all on, on paper. That's, that's actually going to, you know, reroute that water and take it so that it doesn't, it reduces the volume going toward his property. I, I believe so. And I think another, you know, going, just going down that thought process, if you look in the middle of the, of the artificial turf, there's an area that says yard drain with a top of grade 504.02. So if we're, we're saying that this astroturf is artificial, well, we're capturing all that artificial turf and bringing it south, not, not part of this storm system we're discussing, into another storm system. So we've taken that off the, off the table. So I think, I really think this will work well as long as we can put this pipe in and also with a combination of adding some fill along the north property line to keep that water from migrating to the north. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you. So I have a question now on the pipe that drains this artificial turf. If you didn't put the pipe in and it wasn't there, where would the artificial turf drain to? So the art of so the artificial turf currently there is a pipe there. Um, that, the one that we show heavily going east west, that black pipe is not in. That's what we're proposing. Right. Turf, so 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 I'm saying without that pipe, where would it go? The artificial turf drains currently into an existing storm system that drains 
south along the back of the house and then drains east along the south side of the house into a storm system that was designed as part of the original approval. So that goes that goes south. Okay, so does that go on? Would that go on to anyone else's property? It does not. It goes it goes into a an infiltrator system that has relief that goes if, if that ever fills up goes into Winton Road storm system. Okay, so I guess my, my question is, uh, given the person who asked the questions, if Winton Road isn't accepting anything, then none of the infiltrators are going to be accepting anything. So where does the water go then? So, you know, that's, that's a whole science on itself. And, and Everett and I and numerous engineers can get involved with its time and concentration and during storm events. So you've got to figure that if Winton Road storm system is full, and bubbling out of catch basins that that rain event happened three hours before and finally made it to that big storm system. So the rainwater in this yard will drain before it ever, before that system ever surge charges and went and rode. In yeah, theory. I've, that's what, I've heard that before from, from civil engineers and in right. real life, it never happens that way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It, you know, that's what, that's what they tell me in my neighborhood and other places that the timing is different, but it's, it's, it's nice on the computer, but in real life, it isn't. Yeah, I think it's important to point out that, you know, what this pipe does that we're proposing is it creates a, a spot for where to drain as the original plan drained before. So we had, a, we had this swale proposed along the north side of the house. Um, and yes, changes happen during construction, but essentially this pipe is going to mimic what was there before, you know, so we're just going to drain to the north side of the house again. Um, and then that water from the north side of the house. So nothing really changes from the northeast corner of the house that is there. Um, from where that pipe is proposed, all those original drainage patterns are maintained as the original plan. The one caveat to that is we want to extend, we want to put a grass, we want to elevate the grass a little bit higher to protect Mr. Feldman between the end of the existing berm and the silver maple that's there. So it, it's, it's really, that's really it. It's gonna drain as it was proposed originally back in, in uh, 2021 uh, with, the, with this additional pipe. Right now, I think Mr. Felton is exposed to rain events and we have no way to help him right now because we can't do any construction out there. There's a stop work order on us. But I think once this pipe gets in, it's gonna be a great benefit. So. Mr. Feldman is to the west of you. He's to the north. Okay. David, are you set? Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. We have some other hands raised. Yes. Good evening. Sorry about that. This is Peg Warwick. It took me a sec. Um, just speaking on Mr. Feldman's behalf, as somebody who has a wet basement, I'm in a different neighborhood. I live at 215 Idlewood Road. This is Peg Warwick. Um, but somebody in this discussion mentioned that a rain event, and it's a couple hours later until the water will be an issue for Mr. Feldman. Um, every spring, spring rain on snow piles is a long time. It, it's flowing into the basement for hours. So while some quick rainstorms, I can see his point that it could get through the pipe in time. Spring snow melt, I, you know, I'm assuming on this turf would then run in for quite a while in some days on the days where it's warm and raining. Um, so I don't know if that impacts this yard the same way it does mine, but just hoping people think about that when they think about the water flow at its max. And that's all I have. Thanks, Peg. Okay. Other board members have questions? Karen or Jason? I'm good. All right. Uh, Jeff, how about you? 
Um, just a question. Once for John, once the flow gets past the the berm, the new the proposed berm, what direction will that water flow? So the water flow is always going east. So we're proposing it to go east into South Winton Road uh, as originally intended. So if we start looking at, at the end of this eight inch pipe at the fence at the West Range line of the of the of Wendy and Bruce's house, that that's our that's the same place it was draining before on the approved plan. Um, the berm that was installed and the tree plantings installed by the landscaper, I think, was a, an attempt to help block the water from going any further north. And I think our proposed six to twelve inch grass berm will do the same. So it, it's always going east. Um, if that answers your question. Once it gets past that berm, uh, is, there, is there going to be any flow from that going to the Feldman's property? No. So it's all going to go to the road? To the road. OK. Thank you. OK. All right. Uh, any other board member questions? Um, yeah, I hate to, to belabor this, but I'm, I'm still curious. Um, on the map, um, I rotated mine so north was up, but the little, I think you talked about the, uh, the, um, the corner of the yard, there's an existing catch basin that picks stuff up and goes out. Um, that would be in the northwest corner. Is that correct? No, there is no existing structures there at all. Is that something you're adding? We're proposing that it's, it's not a catch basin, it's just the end of the pipe. So it says eight in that end section. So I guess I, I guess looking at the contours, I don't I don't see I see where the berm sends the there's a berm with the trees. There's the new grass berm. I see both of those, so the water can't go um, to the north. But if you went north directly from the artificial turf, I don't see what stops it from continuing to flow north. Well, the, the artificial turf doesn't flow north, doesn't flow west, doesn't flow east. It, it stays on the artificial turf because it doesn't, it's, uh, it's, it's basically like, let's call it a concrete pad and goes into that catch basin that's in the turf. Right, but my but, point is when the catch basin's not working, then where does it go? When it go just straight north? Uh, I think I'd have looked closely at the contours, but I think it'll, it would it would spill both north and west. And, and if it went west, it would eventually make its way into that end section that we're proposing. OK. And there's a berm north of the turf that would keep it from that would make it flow to the the east again. Is there a berm north of the turf? Because I can't see that on what I'm looking at. You know, there's, it's almost the same elevation. So the turf is at 504, and it 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 does drop where the rocks are. Is the transition? So the rocks are like almost like a wall. Uh huh. Is, that's where the that's where the if you go the pictures that I provided might give you a better idea of that it's kind of maybe be hard with the fence but there's if the, the, the turf elevation is at 504 mr feldman's yard is at 502 503 right so it, it's definitely higher it's, than mr feldman is there something in between that turf and mr feldman's yard though that's lower it's all higher the rocks do the transition of about a foot and a half So it's, it's, you've got to look at those pictures again. I don't know, Jeff, you can go back to those. It's, it really tells the story. And, and, it, and I know the map is very busy because we really did it in an attempt to give Everett the most detail we could. Uh, yeah, not that picture. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably, that's the West property line. And if you look at the, the top of the rocks to the bottom of what rocks on the West, it's about a foot drop. What you see on the west, that picture, 
also was pretty similar to what you see at the north. There's just a big section that so far we've left unlandscaped until this is all resolved. Okay, so if I look on the left side of the screen, the left side of the picture, is that lower than the right side? Higher. The, the rocks are about the same elevation, but the west side of the rocks are about a foot and a half lower. So the bottom of the fence is about a foot and a half lower than the top of the rock. So what stops the water from just running underneath the fence? Uh, we're proposing a four inch perforated drain. Right. My, I, and my question was, if that perforated drain doesn't work, then yep. the water just goes under the fence. It goes under the fence and it would work its way towards that proposed end section of that eight inch pipe to the north. I thought the fence was a property line. No, nope, the fence is on our property line. But if it goes under the fence, doesn't it end up on the other property? I guess it, it would act the way it acts today. Uh, it, it, it would go north along the west line uh, right. towards the proposed. Yes, it would go. You see that big tree that's there with the telephone pole? Yeah. That, that's where it would head. Okay. And that's kind of right where we're proposing that end section of that pipe to take any water and bring it to the east. So then if, if this, the infiltration doesn't work, then this artificial turf will make the drainage problems worse. If, if, like you're saying, where, the, where those gentlemen are standing on the artificial turf, if that if that catch basin clogs and that whole system, I think I think it'll affect the, the uh, Wendy and Bruce's house first. I think it's going to go towards their hardscape to the south. Um, but I, I guess to your point, yeah, it could it could. There's a lot, and there's like that ten foot of of topsoil you see there. I, I don't see it migrating quickly off that astral turf um, to the west. That's all okay. proposed planting, but Peg Warwick had been there for the um, for the school, but then she she made a point about you know if this is loaded with snow and then you get a rain event, then that drain. So mm -hmm. the so your your the infiltrators where they start are they are they uh, how much higher are they than the storm system on Winton Road? See so the elevation of Winton Road itself is at ninety nine and a half, and we are at so we're about um, three and a half feet higher than Winton Road the end of that pipe all right so that's, then it's, it's then it's very unlikely that if winton road his the storm sewers on winton road have failed that um it's it going back. to back up into your I, yard yeah i don't i don't see that happening i don't it's just what will happen is you will just make winton road storm sewers fail worse well which which uh, will be the case anyways in a torrential storm. Yeah, it's the same drainage area that we had before on the approved plan. So I don't know if, it, if it's fair to make, call it making it worse, but it's going, it's going to Winton Road. Okay, yeah, all right. All right. I would, I would think basement flooding is not being caused by a storm drain on Winton Road overflowing. And it, and it could be groundwater, not surface water that we're talking about tonight. Right. Okay. Now I really am done. <laughs> Thank you. Any, uh, anybody else on the board have other, other questions or comments? All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, one last call for the, for the public. Any other public uh, Anybody in the audience care to address this? Okay, thank you. Uh, move on, lost my agenda. All right, that'll bring us to application APO 222, application of paychecks of New York LLC owner and Galisano business uh, COE. Uh, for the condition of use permit uh, at 150 Sawgrass Drive. Is there anybody here representing the applicant? Uh, 
Yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jerry Goldman. I'm the attorney and agent for Golisano Business COE, Inc., who is the applicant for the repurposing of the 125,000 square foot building, which is located at 150 Sawgrass Drive. Uh, I'm familiar with this building from a long way back. I was involved with it when it was General Railway Signal, and then be, which renamed as Alstom, and then ultimately Paychex acquired the building. Um, it's been used for offices and, and used pretty intensely, as we'll talk about a little bit when we get to traffic. Um, with me tonight on the application are Matt Tomlinson, who is a project engineer from Marathon Engineering, as well as Matthew Ray and Dale Tawarkas, who are representatives of Galasano Business COE, Inc. Um, the property is proposed to be repurposed for, uh, for an alternative learning environment to a traditional four-year college and university. It's intended to be a post high school program. Individuals who attend are intended to receive a more concentrated program focused on the various areas of working in or running a business. Uh, the actual curriculum is in development right now, but the concept is that this particular educational product will have a short period of time, will be a two year uh, program will be very intensive program and the cost to attend will be significantly less expensive than a traditional four year program. It's expected that there will be everyday learning uh, traditionally in the morning and, uh, and based upon uh, what we have on the slate, we think that the impacts are gonna be substantially less than what an office would be. So with that, uh, we're here tonight making an application. Under the town code, we're located in the BE1 office district. And under the town code, among the conditional uses are what's listed as cultural facilities. Cultural facilities, I'm going sheet by sheet because all of them are sheet by sheet considerations. Cultural facilities are defined under the code as establishments such as libraries, museums, art galleries, schools, places of worship, botanical gardens, and zoological gardens of primarily historic, educational, or cultural interests. So we are under the cultural facilities definition for conditional use. By the way, that definition for conditional use was added to the code in 2014 so that there was a specific intent on the part of the town board to allow for those specific types of uses and I think we'll be back revisiting uh, that definition uh, later in the presentation. Uh, but one thing that I would like to point out is that the planning board report that was put together by staff which again is a very, very good report and professional report, uh, calls this out as a school. In fact, we have not used the definition of school for this particular use. We consider it to be a, a college, excuse me. They've called it out to be a college. And we uh, have eschewed the formal definition of college because college is a term which has a number of definitions. I, I went, and pulled out a number of them. Merriam-Webster uh, calls, it, calls it a place where you have instruction, uh, usually in a professional, vocational, vocational or technical field. Uh, another definition which is out there uh, talks about an educational institution, in particular one providing higher education or specialized professional or vocational training. There's another definition that defines college as an institution which provides a general or liberal arts education rather than technical or professional training. And the definition which causes us the most issue is the fact that a college is defined uh, by the New York State Education Department is a higher educational institution authorized by the regents to confer degrees. At this point, 
Uh, this is not intended to be a degree uh, bearing uh, facility. We expect that graduates will come out with a certificate, but in fact, we are a school and a school is exactly what is defined as a conditionally permitted use under the code. Uh, in our letter of intent, we did walk through uh, the conditional use permit standards. I will take a couple of minutes and, and go through them as well. Uh, in order to grant a conditional use, the planning board shall find that the request is in harmony with the general purposes and intent of this chapter, uh, which is the zoning chapter, taking into account the location and size of the use, nature and intensity of the operations, and, um, and access to streets. Um, for the particular site. Again, um, we have provided traffic uh, reports to indicate a traffic study to indicate uh, that we are actually gonna be providing less uh, traffic onto the road network. Uh, we are less intense use in an area that can actually serve to have some less intense uses. And uh, the general purposes and intent of the zoning chapter is to provide uh, for education. So we think that we've squarely fit in uh, to the category in subsection A of 217.7. In addition, the second uh, characteristic is that uh, this particular use will not be detrimental to the health, safety, and general welfare of persons residing or working in the neighborhood of the proposed use or detrimental or injurious to the property and improvements in the neighborhood. Uh, this is part of Brighton Meadows Business Park, and as we take a look at it, uh, it's near the entry from the signalized entry of, uh, of Sawgrass Drive coming off of West Ball Road. Um, in this particular case, uh, we certainly will not be detrimental to the health, safety, and general welfare of, the, uh, of our neighboring properties. All of our... Um, all of our use will be contained within the building. We're not proposing any outdoor use at all. We have sufficient parking facilities for our people and our students and staff and, and those who will be working in the facility as well. The third standard is whether the proposal will result in the destruction or loss of a natural, scenic, or significant historical resource. And again, first, there are no historical resources in this particular area but we certainly aren't affecting any of them by just repurposing the building. Uh, the fourth standard B uh, says the proposal will not create excessive additional requirements of public costs for public facilities and services and will not be detrimental to the economic welfare of the community. Uh, this was cited as something that I believe council may be addressing with the board. And when he does, I would request the opportunity to uh, address any comments he may have, but certainly there are no additional requirements for public facilities uh, related to what we are uh, what we are proposing on this site. Uh, next standard is that the proposal will be served adequately by essential public facilities such as highway streets, police, fire protection, stormwater drainage, water, sewer, and schools. Uh, oddly enough and that the applicant shall otherwise provide these services will be adequately obtained. Um, again, we are already in a developed environment. We are not a new build and there's nothing ground up here. So to that extent, uh, we are not gonna be putting any uh, strain on existing public facilities. Uh, the next standard, the sixth standard is the proposal will not result in unmitigated destruction or loss of or mitigated damage to trees. We're not looking to impact any trees on the particular site. And the proposal essentially conforms to the town master plan. And we go to the town master plan and the Envision Brighton plan and talk about uh, history, cultural diversity and, economic, and educational opportunities. And clearly this provides an alternative educational opportunity that we think is, is well served uh, within the Brighton area. Uh, just like to make a, a couple of additional comments as they relate to uh, the site plan, the planning board report. What you have before you is a site plan from when additional parking was put in to serve paychecks roughly in 2008, uh, if I recall. So the area which is shaded in gray 
is parking which is already in existence. We are not talking about any changes to the site. And to that extent, we are not seeking a site plan modification. In terms of the number of students in use, uh, we expect that this program will be phased in essentially over a two year period. Uh, in the first year, we expect to have 250 students uh, plus or minus, and those 250 students would be located on the first floor of the facility initially. That is the plan. And in the second year, again, remembering this is a two year program, uh, we would be moving on to utilizing the second floor of the building. There were some questions which were raised as part of the planning board report, just like to briefly uh, talk about them. Uh, what types of programs will be offered was the first question, again, primarily dealing with business uh, areas such as finance, human resources, entrepreneurship, sales and marketing operations, business analytics. Those are all um, explored right now as being potential programs. Uh, occupancy, again, will be 250 people and probably between 40 and 60 staff in the first year. Uh, the parking uh, analysis uh, does provide for parking analysis for this particular use and shows that we will um, not be having a significant impact at all with regard to traffic. We're not proposing any changes outside the building. At 125,000 square feet, we do not anticipate uh, any future expansion of the facility itself. We believe that we can be fully contained within uh, the facility. And future changes uh, in the academic program, of course, academics are organic. You know, we do uh, grow, we do change as, as needs are out there. So at this point, we are totally business oriented, but um, there's always a possibility that there would be other offerings that would be uh, part of the educational program. And the last question which was raised, is there any new lighting proposed? Uh, and we are, and I'm gonna turn this over to Matt Tomlinson who's the engineer. I don't believe we're proposing new lighting, but I'm gonna let him address that. But let me just say from our perspective, um, the, uh, the one clarification that we did want to make is that in fact, we are, of the school. We are not looking to be classified as a college for, uh, for zoning purposes or for any other purpose. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Matt Tomlinson. We have two Matt here. Sure. Thanks, Jerry. There, there's no intended changes to the parking lot, as Jerry mentioned, or the lighting there. And primarily, as Jerry mentioned, the anticipated school hours and the basis for the analysis is the of the traffic uh, trip gen letter that was submitted indicate that there would be very light if any usage uh, during the hours um, dusk to dawn if you will and I think one of the comments or potential conditions was also related to a time around the lights which would be acceptable as well so there are no plan changes to lighting okay with that clarification, did Matt Tomlinson, do you have anything else to uh, to share? No, the uh, I know that the number of parking spaces uh, was a question mark, and there also was a previous variance that was granted for narrower parking spaces being eight and a half feet wide versus nine. And we're happy to discuss that if there's further question uh, on the board's behalf relative to that as well. Okay, Matt or Dale, on behalf of Galisano COE, any additional comments you want to offer before we close our presentation? No additional comments here. Agree, Thank Jerry, you. yep, you covered it well. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, with that, uh, of course, we are available to answer any questions that the, uh, that the board may have. We do understand because of county planning, there will not be a vote on this matter uh, this evening, but we would like to garner as much uh, input and be able to uh, address or at least acknowledge any questions that we may have to go back and provide further information uh, to the board on. So with that, we thank the board for their attention. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I have one question first for Matt, and then I have a question for 
our attorney, Ken Gordon. Uh, my, my first question for, for Matt is in the traffic study, Matt, I guess I, I, I looked at it, McFarland Johnson prepared it. What, what category of use did they, did they use in the trip generation? Do you, do you recall? For the existing, they utilized a sing, single tenant office building land use. And then in the proposed, uh, they compared it with uh, what they basically used as a weighted between a junior or community college, which would be a typical commuter two-year type school, and then also a regular university or college, um, just to see where the numbers shook out between those two and anticipated that that would not be a significant uh impact utilizing either of those codes but ultimately from a comparison for purposes the junior community college was chosen just because it seemed to be a better representation with the high level of commuters with no residential on site uh, for comparison purposes and we should point out there's no residential component as a part of this uh, proposal okay yeah I was just curious uh, and that's a that are, those are ITE standards. Yes, that's that's correct. Yes. All right. Thank you. Um, and for Ken, uh, Ken, in my thirty years, I have seen every bit of this every every application from the original General Railway Signal, as Jerry <laughs> uh, <laughs> mentioned, and every subsequent modification to this site. Um, but I would say in our in our time, um, in the last 30 years, um, we have not had a conditional use permit uh, related to an education or school use. Um, could you just offer us some some guidance? We're typically looking at other other uses and uh, would would like to understand what the what the impact is of the, of the definition of this use is. Well, <clears throat> uh, staff and I, uh, so that would be uh, Commissioner Guyon, um, Jeff, uh, Rick DiStefano, our senior planner, uh, Everett Garcia, our town engineer and I, did meet early on in this process to review the code. Um, I would say that staff came to the conclusion that Mr. Goldman came to, which is that this use is a school use under a cultural use definition and would be a conditional use for this particular district. So we don't believe that there is any use variance needed um, in terms of impacts for school, um, uh, school uses. Um, I'm not sure what you're asking me there, Bill. Okay, it seemed that Jerry spent some, some effort in his explanation to make the differentiation between uh, the term college and school. And I, I wondered from, from the town standpoint in the code, uh, we, we've really never faced this. There, this. There, are some, there are some vagaries, I will say, um, in the code when it comes down to defining which districts a school is allowed in as a cultural institution, which districts a educational facility or college are allowed in. And um, mm -hmm. uh, the code doesn't do a really good job of separating those out, quite frankly. Um, mm -hmm. And the way we've um, interpreted the code, the way staff is interpreting the code is consistent with what Jerry has spelled out here today. Very good, thank you. So, um... But if, if I could just, if I could ask just, because uh, I'm curious and just in the mm -hmm. sake of full disclosure, Golisano Business COE Inc. I'm not familiar with the acronym COE. Could somebody please explain to me what COE stands for? Center of Excellence. Thank you. Okay, now it makes sense. I, I didn't follow that one either, Ken. I thought it might've been College of Education. No, it's not College of Education. It's it's Center of Excellence. Okay. Um, and all right. Um, so we we will typically be in, in a conditional use 
you know, we, we do typically look at materials that are stored in the building, if it's a manufacturing facility, uh, you know, any kind of hazardous materials or waste uh, materials. Uh, if it's a restaurant and it's outdoor seating, are we talking about paper plate service or are we talking about, you know, China service? We're looking at how things like uh, garbage is handled, how loading and unloading are handled, hours of operation, a um, lot of a lot of issues that on a daily operation standpoint would stand to impact predominantly the adjacent neighbors and have any potential impact to property values. So I, I my understanding is that this use needs this needs a conditional use permit, but you're really not proposing anything in the way of modifications to the site plan, to access points, to parking, uh, to utilities, to the way that garbage is handled. Um, Correct. I, I think I've got, you know, the, the gist of the application. Um, I guess I'll, I'll ask other board members, other board members have questions or comments for, uh, for the applicants. Uh, could everybody please mute yourself if you're not speaking? Thank you. I was curious about whether there was an existing cafeteria in the building or whether food service would be available for the students. There is an existing cafeteria in the building, uh, food facility, which was there for Alstom and I, I assume for paychecks. I was more familiar with the Alstom operation. Uh, but that will uh, that will also be there to serve uh, the students who will be there, um, you know, during the day. Is, is there any intention to have that open to the public? I'll leave that to Matt and Dale. My answer would be no, but I don't. I can't speak for them. I don't know if they're trying to unmute or not. Yeah. All right. I was allowed to be unmuted. We are not planning to serve the public. How about other tenants out in Sawgrass? No. If I could just ask a couple follow-ups on this, Karen, just uh, on the cafeteria issue. Um, so um, while the current food service that existed there was serving um, GRS or Alstom or, or paychecks, about how many people ate there each day? We don't have that. We don't have that information. My expectation is that the majority of them would, by the size of the facility. So the majority of the employees wouldn't bring their lunch. They would eat uh, from the cafeteria. Well, That's they may bring their lunch, um, or they may purchase it there, but they would eat within that cafeteria space. And um, for your student population, how many are you, how many of your 500 students are you estimating will be eating in that cafeteria on a daily basis? Half. Well, excuse me, eating. Um, we expect that they all will be eating within the space, and whether they bring their lunch or whether they purchase it there, um, my expectation is that it would match similar to the previous user paychecks. I'm just curious about um, whether there will be an increase in waste uh, based on student more students having food prepared for them at the cafeteria, whether there will be a need for more deliveries of uh, food product and other products to the building because of a cafeteria serving a student population of 500 as opposed to office workers. Um, do you have anything like that in any of your application papers or your studies that you've presented to the town? We do Kim, if I if I can speak to that just a little bit, uh, outside of the food preparation piece, office use versus uh, tenant, the a usual or a typical calculation on on solid waste or water usage is usually by occupant, uh, and of course there are some um, rule of thumbs that you can use for food prep on or off site, but usually by occupant, the previous 
employee load was approximately 650 uh, full-time employees there on a typical eight to five schedule. Uh, we're anticipating a typical or a maximum occupant load of roughly 560 people. So we would anticipate that the uh, waste usage, water usage would be uh, consistent or lesser than previously experienced given the number of employees specific to the paychecks operation. And that's in the application papers that have already been submitted to the town? Yes, the, uh, number, the numbers of people that we had are in, are in the application. The traffic report, uh, Matt, you can, you can expand on this. Uh, you know, deals with those numbers as well. I'm sorry, jump over you, Matt, go ahead. Yeah, no, that's correct. And, and we also uh, did not indicate any anticipated increase in any of those other services in the short EAF because we do not anticipate that. All right, thanks. Thank you, Karen, for letting me jump on your coattails there. <laughs> uh, Karen, do you have any further questions? Uh, go back around. I'll think about it a few more minutes. Thank you. I, I just want to remind uh, everybody that there is there was one application and one improvement made to this property that is not showing on this particular plan, but uh, the applicant, well, paychecks came in several years ago, but added a outdoor patio space. And I that was built. It is. It has been constructed, and part of that was also intended to uh, provide an outdoor space for employees to have lunch uh, and to eat. I don't recall, however, if there were any outdoor kitchen improvements that were made as part of that application and exists there today. But I know that uh, they did develop quite a nice outdoor space. Uh, on that southeast corner. That's just anecdotal information. Uh, other board members have questions of the of the applicants. David, do you have any questions? No, I do not. Okay, uh, John Osowski. Yeah, no, no, my questions have, have already been asked and addressed by others. Thank you. Thanks, John. And Jason? Same with John. I'm all set. All right. Karen? I think I'm all set. All right. All right. Uh, Jeff, how about you? Do you have any further questions or comments? Um, Jerry said that there would be no expansion of the facility itself, but do you see there being future growth beyond um, the facility? The expectation is that the 500 student level is probably a comfortable number. Um, you know, if there are additional programs, as I said, if there, if the organic changes which occur take us take us into different fields or subsets of business, so let's say particular uh, disciplines of, uh, of business, how, how to run a law firm, for example, because Lord knows lawyers need to learn how to operate their businesses better. Um, you know, if, if that's the case, there may wind up being some, uh, some growth, but like I said, within the 125,000 square foot footprint, we feel pretty comfortable that it will absorb any, uh, any potential growth at the site. Okay. And do you know if this is intended to be a non-for-profit facility? Or not? I don't know about the business structure itself and how that is uh, and how that is set up. But um, you know, it is it is an educational uh, venture, so yeah, I, I can't discount that possibility. Okay. Um, and a note of the college and school thing that is something that we did notice today, and there is an updated. That changes the college to school in the in the planning report. Oh, sorry. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Jeff, you you set? Yeah, I'm set. Okay. This is a public hearing. Hey, uh, uh, Bill, I've got a couple questions. Oh, Ken, please. Thanks. Um, 
Jerry, I think I heard you say that there is no residential component of this project. Um, that sounded like a qualifier of this project. Is there a plan to put dormitories um, in close vicinity to this school so that there will be a residential student population somewhere on the uh, Brighton Meadows campus? Um, I'll, I'll let Dale address that, but I always have a tendency to couch things in a way of leave me some wiggle room. But I, but the fact of the matter is, I, I personally know of none. Dale, do you have anything to yeah. offer? Yeah, there are no current plans. Okay, so then would the um, would the applicant object to a condition on the conditional use permit that that be that the conditional use permit be for strictly a commuter school? Yes. You'd object to that? No, no, I do not object. Okay, so that would be fine. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm interested in knowing more about um, whether um, the school is going to be paying full property taxes or not. That is yet to be determined based on the structure we're in. We're, we're in work in progress at this point. I understand. One of the findings that the uh, planning board is required to make, and Jerry went over these, um, it is uh, number four is that the um, conditional use uh, will not be detrimental to the economic welfare of the community. Um, the town and the planning board particularly will need an analysis uh, of what the economic impact will be on town, county, and school district tax revenues if you plan to take this project and this property off the tax rolls. That's something that's not there and something that I would request be provided if it is your intention to take it off the tax rolls. I will, I will make this statement and, and I, acknowledge your, I acknowledge your comment. And, and since we are going to be tabled anyway, we will need to address this in a meaningful sort of way, but uh, the town, as I pointed out, the town board did add cultural facilities as a conditionally permitted use in the uh, in this district, and all of those uses, libraries, museums, art galleries, schools, places of worship, botanical gardens, and zoological gardens, almost uniformly are are not for profit. I, I think there may be a small subset uh, which could be. Uh, fully on the tax rolls, but um, and also like to point out that from an economic impact point of view, uh, projects which qualify for uh, Comita, for example, uh, have at least partial tax abatement. So there is all of that to be considered as part of the economic modeling as we talk about this particular property. Sure, I, I think though that the planning board needs that information unless. Um, there can be some assurance that it, this project will be paying full taxes or alternatively, and, and this is really what I'd like to talk about a little bit, um, has the applicant considered locating this school on property that is already off the tax rolls, uh, much like Empire State College did. When Empire State College came to town, originally they were going to locate on property on South Clinton, uh, across from Topps Plaza. Um, ultimately, they ended up locating on DDSO property on Westfall, uh, and that made it so that this educational institution, Empire State College, uh, would not end up taking new property off the Brighton tax rolls. Is that something that the applicant would be willing to consider looking around? Um, I, there's a might be a great opportunity to have this uh, business school, for example, on the MCC campus. Is that something that the applicant is willing to consider? I think uh, I'll speak I'll speak for the applicant and then Dale can speak as well. Uh, but I know that there was an extensive search to arrive at this particular property. Um, I don't think that any consideration is completely off the table. Let's put it that way. Dale? Correct. Yes, we have performed a pretty extensive search for um, looking to locate the facility at a different location. Um, this one warrants for a lot of reasons in which we're um, highlighting it. Um, we have we have taken a look. 
and we would further look. I, I strongly encourage you to, to chat with the folks at MCC. I think there might be some real good opportunities for some synergies there to, uh, to have a, uh, a Golisano uh, uh, Center of Excellence uh, School of Business, whatever it's going to be called, uh, located on, on that property. If, if MCC were willing to, uh, to work with you, I think that's something that you, you ought to explore. Um, I think that would be a, a great win-win potentially for the community. Um, I, I note that we have a diverse and, and broad group of participants here this evening, which I wouldn't normally expect to see on this application. So uh, we know that there's some interest beyond the bounds of the property. Right, and I wanna, I wanna get through uh, my questions. Uh, I just have a couple more so that our, uh, uh, our folks who have taken their time and their valuable time to join us for this planning board meeting do get an opportunity to uh, ask their questions and speak their piece as well. Um, one last uh, area that I did want to inquire into, however, um, I'm curious as to where the um, school stands with respect to applying for and obtaining uh, any kind of uh, licensure from the state education department. Where does that stand? That is in uh, process. Um, so an application has been filed with state no, ed? No, no, we're currently evaluating our opportunity, our options. Okay. Uh, my understanding is, is that under uh, state education law section 5001, you can't operate that school without getting approval from the state education department, unless you fall under one of the exemptions I've reviewed the exemptions. I don't think your school falls under any of those exemptions, um, unless you're not gonna charge tuition. But I think you're charging tuition, right? Correct. Yeah. So um, uh, I'm not sure uh, whether the planning board can give any kind of approval for a use which is not even lawful at this point in time. Um, so I would think that you would have to go at least make an application and my understanding from the state education department actually today is that there is no application pending. Um, I'm not even sure if they're currently accepting applications um, until 2023, um, but um, you might know more about that than I do. So I had misspoke when I said that um, we're in process. We are not currently making an application to New York State. Okay. Well, I, I, I'd, I'd encourage I'd encourage council to take a look at Education Law 5001 um, and take a look at the requirements there. I don't think you can operate without getting that licensure. I will certificate I, program or uh, that, and that's for a non-degree program, Jerry. Um, correct. I, I'll take I'll take a look at 5001A. Uh, I am not involved in the business end, if you will, as uh, as you know, Ken. Very often, I'm called upon just to be a night warrior. So. Um, so for what we, is, we like, we like to see your smiling face. That's uh, that's all. So for what it's worth, uh, now that it's been raised as an issue um, for the uh, in the context of the planning board application, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Thank you, uh, Bill. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay, Ken. Thank you. Um, all right, let's uh, let's move on. I, would like to ask anybody in the audience that cares to uh, speak to this application, please raise your hand so Jeff and Brendan can see you and, uh, and let you into the conversation. Anybody care to speak? Or if you turn on your camera, we can see you as well. Any hands raised? or use the raise hand feature, either use the raised hand feature or turn on your camera and wave at us madly so we can see that you're out there. We see, we see you're out there, just don't see anyone raising their hand to speak. Nothing so far. I think it's referred to as auditing the course. <laughs> A lot of listening. All right. Uh, one last call. Anybody care to address this application? <laughs> okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Jeff, I believe 
all of our application that anything else is either postponed to the next month or uh, been withdrawn. So that was our last public hearing of the evening. Correct. Do you, do you concur? I do concur, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, why don't we go back and, and address uh, the these two applications uh, that we heard tonight and uh, then we'll go on to signs. So certainly, um, let me go back and just ask, I guess, one more time if they're on the application of um, 6PO322, this is burn companies, and this is for a preliminary and final site plan at 150 Metro Park. Nobody here on behalf of the applicant or anybody in the public that wishes to address that application. I'm not seeing anybody. Okay, uh, then I'll make a motion that we deny uh, without prejudice application 6P0322 uh, on the basis of uh, lack of additional information submitted to the board and appearance by the application at the board meetings. I'll second. The second from Jason. Thank you, any other discussion? Jeff, please call the roll. Altman? Aye. Price? Aye. Peter? Aye. Brad Cox Steiner? Aye. Masaski? Aye. All right, our next uh, application is 8PO122. This is uh, Wendy Frieda through Stan for a site plan modification uh, in conjunction with their uh, home improvements at 575 Winton Road. Um, I guess we need we need a a, a motion and a second. Then we can have uh, some discussion. Is anybody interested in making a motion? I can make a motion if you'd like. Please. Um, I move the. Public hearing be closed and the planning board finds the proposed action will not have a significant impact on the environment and adopt the uh, negative declaration prepared by town, town staff. And planning board approves the application AP0122 based on testimony given, plan submitted, and the 12 conditions outlined in the planning board report. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved and seconded. Um, I would, Jeff and uh, Ken, uh, this this approval would come with a lot of uh, kind of a big asterisk that the board would be relying on the expertise of staff uh, to to work with the owners and their contractors to ensure the uh, implementation of the proposed improvements uh, because I think there there were some comments made tonight about the width of the channel and the height of the berm and uh, direction of uh, the flow of the intended flow of water um, picking up water from running off you know, from offsite onto onto this site. I think, again, this is something that is the application makes sense to me as to how it's being addressed it does come down to the to kind of the expertise on the ground, making sure that it's implemented properly. Yeah, I will I will say, uh, Bill, that um, at the staff level, as recently as today, um, Jeff and Rick and Mike and I had a conversation. Was Everett part of that? I don't think so. 
um, about, um, about whether this matter could be approved with those conditions uh, or recommended to be approved with those conditions or whether the recommendation was going to be to table it. Um, and the conclusion was that um, what you said is exactly right, that the, that the issues really come down to um, technical matters that can and should be handled and addressed by staff and working with the project engineer and the owners. My question for you, Jeff, is, did you hear anything tonight in the questions asked, the concerns raised by the neighbors that gives you pause as to whether this can still be handled on the staff level or whether you would rather see the board table this matter for it to take action on sometime um, at a future meeting? Uh, I would be okay with being approved. I talked to Everett today as well, and he 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 felt that it is the the issues that we had with it are things that we can um, work out with the project engineer and the owners. Um, and he's, I mean, him and I've both been to the site. He's been there multiple times. We're aware of the issues, and one of the reasons they're back in here is so that we can work out the the drainage issues. I mean, what I heard both neighbors express was that um, they don't want this project to make their situation any worse than it already is. Um, and ideally, maybe make it better, but at least not make it worse, that they don't want to see drainage from the um, AstroTurf area, for lack of a better description, um, synthetic turf area, to... Uh, cause additional basement flooding or drainage issues onto their properties, either to the north or to the west. Um, and I assume that is what staff's goal is going to be as well, is to make sure that doesn't happen. Yes, it is. And that, and that is to make it comply with the, our code and, and what we have set there for flows changing from neighboring sites to from a, from a site that's being worked on. That's something we always seek to do in all our projects. Okay. All right. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion by the board? All right, Jeff, please call the roll. Altman? Aye. Price? Aye. Bader? Aye. Babcock Steiner? Aye. Masowski? Aye. All right, thank you. All right, that brings us to the application uh, 8PO222, application of Paychecks of New York, owner, Galisano Business Center of Excellence, Inc., uh, for a conditional use permit at 150 Sawgrass Drive. I believe we've mentioned a couple of times that uh, this application would be tabled. Uh, could I please ask someone to make the motion? Just, Just a point of information. Um, in making a motion to table, you do not have to lay out conditions or reasons for the tabling. It can simply be a simple motion to table, which is a non-debatable motion. Thank you. Jason. I move that application 8P0222 be tabled. I'll second that. We're multi-seconded. Thank you. Um, any further discussion by the board? All right, Jeff, please call the roll. Altman? Aye. Price? Aye. Bader? Aye. Babcock Steiner? Aye. Masowski. Aye. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your patience in joining the conversation tonight. Um, looks like we'll have a pretty full agenda in September. Please uh, continue to join the conversation. All right. That leaves us, uh, Jeff, uh, with... Yeah. Sign applications. You yes. You want to walk us through those? Yep.
right. First sign application is for Tipsy Wine and Liquor at 30 Jefferson Road. That's for a building face sign. Um, it was tabled by the Architecture Review Board with conditions. And um, it will also need require a zoning variance because they're asking for signs on two building faces. Okay, I'll make a motion that we table this uh, based on the recommendation of the ARB. I'll second. I'll, I'm just gonna do an all in favor here. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Um, Jeff, on the next application for uh, 1656, I do need to recuse myself mm -hmm. from a particular application. Okay. John, do you mind handling this one? Sure. This is the uh, application number uh, 1656 for tenant names at uh, 3450 Winton Place, the uh, Winton Design Center. The, uh, it's a directory sign. The Architectural Review Board uh, recommended approval with conditions that the uh, sign panel and the box and support shall be charcoal gray and that all tenants shall have the same typeface. Will uh, somebody make a motion? that we uh, approve this with conditions? I move we approve 1656 with conditions. Thank you. Uh, someone second? I'll second. Thank you, seconded by Karen. Uh, let's have a voice vote. all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Hold on, hold on guys. Um, how, many vote, how many people do we have voting for this? Five. No, no, how many are voting? So I, I can we do a roll call, please? Okay. Uh, Altman? Aye. Fader? Aye. Babcock Steiner? Aye. Masowski? Aye. Thanks. I, I, David wasn't on my screen and I was only counting three votes. <laughs> you did the voice vote. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. The, the next one is 1656. It's for Lucky Folk. It's a tattoo place on Monroe Avenue. This one's in a historic building, so it's going, it did not go in front of the Architecture Review Board. It will be reviewed by the Historic Preservation Condition, Commission um, this next week. When when is that meeting, Jeff? Uh, oh, it's next next it's Wednesday. <laughs> Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday, please. Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> we have interest in that one. Okay. All right. So no action needed from us. Um, you guys can review it and vote on it now with pursuing with a condition that it needs historic preservation commission approval. True. Hmm. Maybe it may, uh, I don't know. Jason, you're our, you're our graphic guru. What, uh, what, is that, what does that say to you right now? It's your first reaction. Actually, not bad. I mean, you can see it <laughs> from the street. I mean, that's, um, I mean, you know, and the thing is I hesitate to because it's probably their brand. And, you know, if it's, if it's legible from the street, um, unlike that first one we saw. Um, right. I mean, the, I, the, the question is, is if we approve it and the historical review board doesn't, then does that impact us at all? We'll just have to see it again. Yeah, if they make any changes, so if, a, if HPC tables it and wants changes, then it would come back to the planning yeah. board. Yeah, I see. But 
there this is a permitted use this is not a this is a sign now this is not a yeah. good to do with the use no okay and they're not they're not saying lucky folk tattoo parlor it's just lucky folk yeah it's more they, I had, tat they had it on there as a possibility as tattoo but it was crossed out yeah. yeah i mean i my understanding is this is a new shop um maybe as a matter of trivia um perhaps the first tattoo parlor in brighton um yeah. and it is a it is a permitted use um and um but i you know what you said jason about this being their branding i'm not sure they've established a branding <laughs> <they're very tough. laughs> um I think there's a guy, guy who's uh, the guy, uh, Adam, I can't remember his last name, I think was at a different uh, tattoo parlor and is opening yeah. up his own mm -hmm. shop. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, there's no real consistency in any of the signs there. So, yeah, and that's going to be an issue that, you know, HPC is certainly going to look at. I mean, yeah. HPC's issue is going to be is this sign and how it's colored and designed consistent with the historic character of this building, given the other signs that are already on it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess I personally would vote uh, or make a motion to approve as presented uh, with lucky folk as the graphic and there is a lucky folk tattoo on the drawing to the lower left. I'm not recommending approval of that, uh, but simply the lucky folk as lettered uh, font. I, yeah, I would agree. Does that mean you second? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the second. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, can we, yeah, can just, we'll say approve. With, <laughs> we got to vote on it first. Say that again, Jeff. I think we vote on it first, but I was just going to add the condition that it needs the as lucky folk and then with the approval of the C of A by HBC. With the, so the can, Bill and Jason, are you okay with an amendment to your motion that says, this sign is approved with the condition that the Historic Preservation Commission also approve by issuing a certificate of appropriateness. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Um, okay, why don't you do, because this does have to go to Preservation Commission, why don't you do a roll call? Altman? Aye. Price? Aye. Trader? Aye. Babcock Steiner? Aye. Sasky? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, one more. The last sign is for 2601 Mockdeville Boulevard. It was tabled by the Architecture Review Board with four conditions. Um, looking for proposed materials, details on sign construction, um, how individual tenants slats will be attached, overall height from the ground, depth, sign panel, and cornice treatment. Uh, three is oval address numerals overlap block of real text. And the fourth condition was, the fourth tabling condition was higher resolution visualization images. I move we table application 1658 based on the recommendations for table issued by the ARB. Second. Thank you. Uh, let's just do a roll. No, let's just do a voice vote on this one. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, folks, um, have a heck of a summer. Let's hope it continues. Enjoy your August and your Labor Days. I hate to say that it's coming up, but uh, enjoy it.
and we will. Ken. Um, oh, okay. Ken. Yeah. Um, what is the board's pleasure with respect to setting up a meeting with me to review? I'd like to have an opportunity as counsel to the board to review roles, responsibilities, some case law, um, some statutory law, talk a little bit maybe about seeker. Um, I'd like to talk about uh, the LUPA and how that interplays with what we do at planning board, all of those things. Um, it can be, it, this is not a, um, uh, an executive session. It's not a planning board meeting. It's a, it's a meeting I'm asking to have as your counsel that with you to give advice to my, my clients, my, my board. Um, and so I wanna schedule it when it's convenient for you. We could do it either in person or by Zoom. But if you could, um, I know we, we had sort of talked about doing it this past Monday, that didn't happen. And um, uh, we talked about maybe doing it after this meeting, but I think it's a little late uh, to try to do that tonight. Um, so um, with maybe Bill, with your permission, maybe um, I could arrange to have a doodle poll sent out to have people pick some days and times that would work and maybe we can set something up that way. Absolutely, that's fine. Yeah, I look forward to the conversation. This is um, my 20 plus years on the board. Um, we've really rare, very rarely done. If, yeah. if but it's, it's certainly appropriate to do, uh, the law allows for it. And I think, I think it would be beneficial for all so I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. Right. John, and John and David, you guys have been on a while too. And I, I don't know that we've ever, you know, no. really gone through roles and responsibilities in actual statutory law. So can we appreciate that? Great. Okay, yeah, please. Uh, Jeff and Ken, if we could get a doodle. Yeah, Jeff and I will coordinate getting a doodle poll out so we can do that. Thank you. One that works this time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I was wishing you all a good rest of the summer. We'll see you before the end of summer, but uh, have a good week and good next month. We'll see you next month. See you guys. Good night. Bye. All right, thank you. Hey, Jeff, can you stay on with me for a minute after? Uh, and Brandon, you can. Brandon, you can stop recording too. Gonna wait for 